Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Um, so Aria and, and I today will um, talk about the language of light. Um, and for this, we will look at one particular project, as we've only got 15 minutes. Um, it's Illuminate, and that's at the Science Museum whoops, in London. Um, this used to be the old medicine galleries, which were very dark and gloomy and spooky. This is level five, which had little daylight windows, very small slots. Um, and level four was a complete black box. Um, so not really very prepossessing as an event space. So our brief was to actually um, transform this into a really lovely light experience. And here's a flavor of what we did. you the integration with the architecture of this project um, and I will start with level four um, so this uh, space has been can be defined as a dark space because it is distinguished by a solid ceiling opaque wall linings and it has no daylight um, it, ho it will host event uh, events where projection is of central importance um, as you can see from the photo, the ceiling here is filled with exposed surfaces. So the first layer that we have introduced, it's a modular system suspended below the, um, the mechanical surfaces. So we have created an elegant grid made of diffused lines of light, um, which draw the eye away uh, from the mechanical surfaces. And as you can see from this image, uh, not only we have control of each single line of the grid, but we can um, control independently uh, every joint between the lines. Um, in addition to this first layer of diffused lighting, we have created a second layer of accent lighting. And this is made of two elements. Um, a series of suspended cylinders, uh, which, has, which have an LED source which is quite set deeply um, in the luminaire. Um, in this way, we avoid any reflections of the luminaires on the screens when there are projections. Um, and then, uh, finally, tracks, um, which allow to plug and play different luminaires according to the event. Um, sorry. Uh, so with the combination of grid, cylinders, and track, um, we have created a very versatile lighting scheme, which can range from low contrast to high contrast effects. Um, all the luminaires here are painted in black, like the services, so when they are off, um, they completely disappear in the space. Uh, the WCs are, um, are part of the guest experience, so we have dedicated particular attention to their design. Um, as you can see, they have quite an industrial look, so we have decided to complement uh, this industrial look by um, introducing um, linear LED lights um, above, uh, sitting above the mesh ceiling um, and recalling the traditional fluorescent tubes. But we also uh, needed to, to balance the down lighting and uh, we need to soften the shadows and flatten uh, the face. So we have introduced a decorative element, which are these beautiful globe lights integrated in the mirrors. And that's another picture of the space. Uh, level four and level five are connected by a beautiful new stair. Initially, we intended to, um, to illuminate this stair uh, with an artificial skylight. Um, we, um, we intended to mimic daylight 
in order to relieve level four from, il from its total black box fill. Uh, and on level five, um, we wanted to balance the high brightness coming from the wide panoramic window. Uh, but as the design developed, we have also decided to introduce color. Uh, and in this way, this element uh, can have many different looks, which are um, ideal, which, what, what, what is ideal for an event space like this. Uh, in terms of integration with the architecture, we have designed uh, um, this barisol to be, to be completely flush um, with the ceiling. So when it's off, it becomes a continuation of the ceiling itself. And as you can see, um, it is a brilliant element in the space. So this is an image of level five, um, which is very different from the fourth floor. Um, so this space has been designed as a bright space, and it is characterized by this beautiful, lightweight, exposed roof structure, uh, and by this wide panoramic window from which visitors can enjoy an uninterrupted view to central London and beyond. Um, as for level four, we have designed a very flexible lighting scheme. Uh, so we, um, we have been able to provide um, a good amount of diffused general lighting, but also infrastructure for accent lighting and for focusable spotlighting. Um, in order to achieve these requirements, we have designed uh, for, for this space um, the halos, which are suspended, which are bespoke pendants with the shape of a simple, of a simple circle, um, as we believe this is a, quite an elegant uh, and pure form, which will never look dated in the years to come. So we feel it is, it is timeless. Um, the halos provide diffused uh, um, white and colored light, but they also, um, they also create um, a new visual ceiling line, and they distract the eye from the, from the services above. The location of every single luminaire has been studied very carefully, carefully so they uh, integrate very well in the, roof, in the beautiful roof structure. Um, and they also don't ob obscure the view uh, to the AV screens when there is a projection. So now I'll pass the, I'll pass the microphone to my uh, director, Julie, um, who is going to present you our control, uh, control tool for this project. Hi, hello again, thank you. Um, okay, smart lighting, which is what we've used in this project, you'll hear more about in a moment. Um, our brief was to um, create a space with light that could be um, used for a multitude of events from sort of fine dining to uh, corporate presentations, brand launches, you name it. So we had to put all sorts of lights in place to, to achieve this. Um, the narrative, um, well, it's the science museum, so you think technology um, and innovation. Um, so we thought, okay, we know what the brief is, what we've got to deliver. Let's, let's make it fit, fit the actual space and, and the client really well. Um, to do that, um, we had to collaborate with some of the, the, the best people um, out there to deliver um, the right technology and the right products for us. So um, we um, worked with Sicato for the um, intelligent modules, for the light modules and the control initially. And um, then, because it's an event space, we thought, hey, let's make some of these feature lights sing and dance. Um, for that, we needed another um, control protocol, which is DMX. So for that, we went to Pharos. Um, and then we needed to have the lights made. So we then went to UFO, and they made us these beautiful halos and grids that you'll see more of in a moment. Um, and then finally, um, how do these lights actually get controlled in the space? And again, because it's a science museum, we thought it's got to be up to the moment, technology. Um, Sicato do have an app, but we wanted something that was really super easy to use um, for, for the space. And you'll see what we've developed for that too in a moment. Okay. Well, in any space, you need to have, I think, push buttons on the wall. Um, if a cleaner comes in at five in the morning, 
they, they don't have the fancy app, they've got to be able to control the lights. So that was the first level of control. Um, then there's the app for mobile or iPad, um, which is very modern and up-to-date. Um, and finally, uh, because this is a live event space, um, we have got a live moving light, and the event team can plug in an ArtNet board and control the light live from that platform. So this is the simple push buttons on the wall. And again, you know, we thought about the lighting uh, um, and the design of these. So being the Science Museum, it felt right to have sort of stainless steel and, and, and a light to indicate where you were. The Science Museum app. Um, as you'll see here, it's, it's very sort of simple. Um, it's divided into level four and level five, if you look at the um, screen on the end. Um, so you go into each level and you can control each light individually or collectively. So if you look at the screen on the right, um, you'll see that shows you all the halo lights you looked at earlier. Um, you can press on them individually and take up their different colors. Um, the uplight and the downlight elements separately or collectively. So very, very simple to use. In the middle screen, if you look at the top right hand um, word details, now this is what you get when you click on details. Um, it's, it's the health of the light. Now this is something that Cicato provide, but we can just capture it all very easily, uh, which is great for building management um, teams that need to know how these lights are running. Here's a flavor of the app. So you'll see here, these are just various preset scenes. So it's really easy to go in there and side you'll have a mixed color scene, um, a cool white scene, um, just really easy to use. Individual lights can be accessed. And again, they're all mapped out on these plans. And you can see you just swipe your finger across, easy peasy, to control the levels of the light. Um, and again, color mixing, easy peasy. So I think we've got the gist of this, um, but it, it works for both floors the same way. So I'm going to move on. OK, so now level four, um, that's the black box. And in that area, we actually um, married for the first time the Bluetooth with the DMX um, lighting control. And this various looks that you get from this grid in that space. It's always very hard to actually film LEDs. Um, it gives you a bit of a flavor, but it's nothing like being in the space, which is really um, wonderful. Okay, the feature skylight that Ariona touched upon earlier that connects both level four and level five. Well, it's like a planet, isn't it? I mean, it looks like a moon, which is really fitting for the Science Museum. So we thought, well, yes, planet. Let's, let's play with this planet. And let's have all the different colors that we can possibly think of. And look at the Science Museum's own branding. Fits perfectly with what we can do. So it's a really nice fit for the client red, white, and blue. Again, depending on who they're actually um, hiring the space out to, this light, this feature light can be um, set to, to reflect the brand of, of whoever's using the space. OK, Go. this is the actual app in action. Um, so you can see it's really easy. You just click on a scene, and you'll see if you look in the ceiling, the lights are changing color. Um, and it's just so intuitive. It's, even I'm, I'm useless at this sort of thing. I can use it. So. OK, so these are the kind of looks um, that, that we can create with the lights in this space. This is, this is where we began with the architects thinking of cool white light and, and corporate before we decided to make them sing and dance and do much more. So here we can get a few of the different looks, orange, Orange might like it. Um, red, white, and blue. 
French wine, maybe. Um, and here, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fantastic space. I mean, it's, it's a London light landscape. And as you can see, the halos just disappear into the reflections in the, in the glass of this panoramic view. And they connect with the London eye. And then you have Harrods there twinkling on the left. So it's a really lovely London light landscape. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's it. Thank you.